Welcome to Composite Clinic. This is a special series I've created to help you fix problems with your Photoshop compositions. In this video, I'm going to show you a couple of ways you can add more depth to your compositions to make them look more realistic. Okay, before we get started, as I said in the intro, I'm doing a series of these videos, so make sure you subscribe to the channel and check out the playlist for Composite Clinic where all these tutorials will be located. You can also find a link to that playlist in the description below this video. Okay, so for this video, I'm gonna show you a couple of things with this Composite of Black Widow I've been working on here in Photoshop. There's all sorts of stuff going on here, so I wanna kind of pick apart this composition and talk about a couple of issues. So if I turn off a couple of things here, we're going to turn off some of the effects, the color grading, all this kind of stuff. I want to kind of get back to the separate images that I've put on screen here, which are really, I guess, the parts you might be working with in your composite. So obviously I've got this layer of Black Widow up the front here. Then I've got this set of baddies in the middle, these Chitauri from uh, Avengers back in 2012. Got a couple of chariots that they ride on all the way up the back there. And then finally, there's the background itself uh, and a couple of things going on around that. So when you work on composites like this, typically like me, you'll start with your kind of key focal character up the top and then you start adding others in and they tend to jar they don't look too good together and you think oh this doesn't look very realistic how can i make these guys sort of work together a bit better and the thing i see people resort to way more often than they should is blur so someone might think right well widow's in the front obviously and then these guys are behind and obviously they're kind of as sharp to look at as she is. So if I just add a bit of blur to them, then it'll make them seem like they're further in the distance, as if you were shooting this photo with uh, a really wide lens um, with a wide open aperture that put everything in the background out of focus. So you might come along to the aliens here, the Chitauri, and add some blur. And then, of course, the problem stacks up because as soon as you've added blur to them, then you've got to add blur to the background. And what happens is people progressively work down the layers, adding more and more blur uh, until it just looks a kind of sludgy gray matter mess. Um, and this is a real problem because blur can get you in a lot of trouble. If you look at any landscape photography, or even if you look at a shot of say, uh, someone in your family, say you've gone to the mountains or something, or gone for a walk in the countryside and taken a shot of your favorite family member by the lake or something, the background, the landscape is rarely out of focus. It's typically only slightly more out of focus than your subject is, unless you're doing a real close up. So say you're taking a photo almost as close as Black Widow is to the camera here, uh, the background will rarely be that out of focus. So inevitably what ha happens in Photoshop is people trying to emulate this effect uh, and they overdo the blur. And of course, as soon as you start with the blur, you've got to keep progressively making layers behind it more and more blurry. So as you can see from this image, I haven't blurred a single layer in this. I've not touched any of them. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, and I'm going to show you why in a second. But one thing I did want to show you with blur, if you do need to use it, and sometimes you do, my advice is never ever use Gaussian blur. So a lot of people will come in here. I've selected the background layer. So a lot of people will come in and they'll go blur, Gaussian blur and apply that same kind of blur treatment across the whole thing. And I mean, I'm going to overdo it, but you can see already it just doesn't look natural. And there's a couple of reasons for that. But the main reason is because it's adding this kind of uniform blur across the entire image and it looks very two dimensional. So it's not realistic. And in fact, this image has a lot of depth to it already because obviously we're staring down a street. So these buildings nearer the front of the picture are going to be more in focus than way up the back. So it's 
it's not a good thing to apply Gaussian blur to images like this. If you do have to use a blur, go with this thing. So if you go to filter, blur gallery, and then field blur, what this will do is allow you to uh, stage how much blur there is in different parts of the picture. So I can click in the middle there and say I want quite a lot of blur. Then I can click nearer the foreground and take the blur all the way down to zero. And I can do the same the other side and we'll take that down to zero. And now what you can see is the foreground is in focus. And as it goes to the middle, it gets more and more out of focus. So the middle's still a bit too blurry. So I'm gonna dial that down a, a little bit. But now at least it's starting to look a little bit more realistic. At least now we've got this sense that as the further your eye gets away from the foreground, the background becomes more and more out of focus. But blur is a very, very subtle thing. You don't want to overdo it. Oh, there's a point there we'll get rid of just to make it even more realistic. For my money, the less blur, the better. It's You, you only want to use it subtly. Another thing you can do with field blur is play with this setting, light bokeh. So what this will do is just take away some of the uniformity of the blur. So it moves it away from the quality of Gaussian blur and starts to introduce, I guess, some of the effects you get with a real lens in terms of how it makes lighter areas bloom um, through the lens. It's a little bit too complicated to explain in this video, but what you'll find is if you use this setting, you'll get much more natural results from your blur. If you play with that, make sure you play with the light range as well, just in case you don't get any hot spots. I can just see a couple around the windows there. But already that looks good. I could apply that right now and I'd be probably happy. But you can see from my image, I've got these guys floating in the sky now. They're a bit too sharp. I've got stuff in the background. So it's gonna create me all sorts of problems. So, how do I add depth to my compositions? Well, the thing I would advise you to lean on more than blur is light. So rather than thinking in terms of adding blur to the things in your background, think about increasing the amount of light. Let me just take you to the background here. I'm gonna turn everything else off apart from this background. This isn't actually the photo that I used because what I've done is I've actually added a bit of treatment to this to make the back building seem further away than they actually are. So if I turn this off, this is actually the photo. So you can see everything's got about the same level of contrast, but what I did was isolate the building at the back and lighten it. Then I got the next couple of buildings and lightened those as well. And then finally I did just a sort of generalized lightning over the top of that. And what this does is it pushes the focus away from those far buildings where if I hadn't done that, these would start to conflict with some of the other stuff I've got going on in the composition. So the way you do this is by using curves adjustments. So all three of these layers here are curves adjustments where I've come on, you come down here, you go add adjustment layer curves. And then you can see with this one, all I'm doing is taking up the shadows. So I just pull the shadows up and you can see what it does. It just lightens the background up. The same on this one. If I click to this one, you can see I've done the same thing again for this tier. Just pulled it up to lighten those up. And then again, same thing with this. And this is what I use to control depth. I'm playing with light, not blur. And what this is really doing is affecting what's called atmospheric perspective. Because what would be happening in real life is pollution and dirt and noise would be in the air and would make things harder to look at, make visibility less clear the further away things are. And so you can use that effect to your advantage by playing with settings like this to reduce the amount of contrast on things in the distance.
That same effect I apply all the way through the composition here. So there are lots of different elements within the composition where in some of these folders I've added that same curves adjustment treatment to make some of these elements less visible and have less importance throughout the composition. So it's a really, really powerful technique to add depth in your composition and control where you want your viewer's eye to look. So that's it for this quick video. I hope you found this helpful. If you're struggling with your compositions, please leave me a comment below on this video and let me know how I can help. As I said, this is one of a series of tutorials on compositions in Photoshop. So make sure you follow the link below as well in the description to the full playlist for this series. And lastly, subscribe to the channel because there is a special subscriber only video you can watch on the channel page here. So go ahead and click that subscribe button now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Head to toyshooter.com for more tutorials, resources, and help with Photoshop compositing. You can also subscribe to my free newsletter by visiting shoot.toys in your browser or clicking on the link on screen. You can also follow my work on Instagram at instagram.com slash shoot.toys. Subscribe to the channel to watch a special subscriber-only video, which you'll find on my channel page after subscribing. Lastly, you'll find links to all the places I've just mentioned in the description for this video below.